It's been a little while since we got this track VMC2. And I guess the question remains, do good things come in small packages? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And on this episode of Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be digging into the track VMC2, how we've used it, and we're gonna get a bit into programming in the ProtoTrack RMX control. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised, today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about our experience so far with the track VMC2, and we are gonna get into doing some programming right here inside the ProtoTrack RMX controller. So a bit of background on how we've been using this and where we've been using it, and this, that, and the other thing. This machine, it's kinda of hard to see. I'll pull the camera around after so you can see where it's located. But we keep this machine right now celled up between you know, this machine, and right across from me here, I can almost touch it with my hand if I lean over there, is our straight turning lathe. This has been extremely, extremely useful. You know, we don't have a lot of other cells in this shop. You know, if you go through, if you watch a shop tour that we have, we have a bunch of machines kind of all in a line. So you can kind of have a cell, a cell meaning multiple machines that one guy can work on. We kind of will have a cell now and again where you know, one person may be working on three machines in a row or two machines in a row. But sometimes I need somebody to run the machine over here and the one over there. They spend a lot of time walking around. They spend a lot of time, you know, not hearing a machine finish. It's not nobody's fault. It's just poor layout. So having this machine directly across from the lathe because it's doing a lot of those secondary operations has been super, super useful. Perfect example, if you look in here right now, we have a chuck on the table. Now, before we talk about the chuck on the table, the one thing that's been super helpful with this as well is this does have the zero point system right in the table. We keep our vise on a zero point system. So when we want to switch from a, from a chuck on the table over to a vise, you know, it's undoing two bolts, pulling it out, and then putting the vise on or vice versa, super quick. So this is an example of a part that was turned previously in the lathe. This is a 303 stainless. We do a lot of these. Now on my big lathe, we have live tooling. It's tied up with other work. My small lathe, I don't have live tooling on. We need to add this hex profile. We have another couple ops we have to do on these too. But this hex profile is absolutely perfect. So while the person's running my lathe, they can turn around, slap these in a chuck and keep those running. So it's almost as if there's zero downtime between the two machines. The other thing is, even if this machine sits a little bit, so let's say the cycle is a little quicker on this machine or vice versa between the lathe, I'm still getting more production out of that one person than if they were just running these, then taking them over to a mill and just running them. So it helps keep things flowing through. You know, another example of quick little jobs that we do in here all the time, this is the mating part for that job. It's uh, again, 303 turned, we have to add a flat, for a screw and a tapped hole, we also have to add a hole. This is a two-piece kind of wrench assembly that's used in the Highline industry. Again, really simple stuff, but it needs to be done somewhere. You know, before there were times where we were setting up jobs like this in my biggest mill, because it was the mill that had time, and we were using a machine with a 60-inch table to do, you know, two holes and a flat. It just, it didn't make any sense. So having this has been super useful. The other thing that we've done with this is all my machines are on a schedule. So I have a spreadsheet that I keep going and on it I have every job and I have every machine organized by day. So I can see exactly what job is going on, what machine when. This machine I have on there, but the VMC2, we've actually found it very, very useful not to schedule it. Because I can't tell you how many times we need to do something quick or we need to make a repair part or we need to you know, modify something. And what would we traditionally do? We'd have to pull something out of another machine or we'd have to figure it out on a manual. With this, you know, I usually have something running in it, but if it's not scheduled, that means, you know, by the next day, usually I can throw something in there, do whatever we need to do and it's done. So it's really given us a ton of flexibility that we didn't have previously. 
So been very, very happy with it so far. You know, no main issues with it. Happy, that's all I could say. When it comes to the Prototrack RMX controller, so the way these machines work is it will read G-code, but also it has that proprietary, you know, RMX Prototrack conversational programming, I guess you would call it. So the nice thing is that we can take our programs from, you know, our master cam, export them and run them in here, but for quick little tool room ops and stuff, we have found, you know, we were always told it and we kind of went, oh yeah, I'm sure we wouldn't use it. We have found that we are using the conversational programming a lot more than we thought we would because it's very, very quick. So we're gonna go upstairs. I actually have an offline programming version of this just so I can screen record it so I'm not juggling between cameras. So I can show you how that works and how we've been using it. Let's go take a peek. Okay guys, so here we have the Prototrack RMX offline programming system. So this essentially allows you to program off the machine. And I found it really handy when that machine's running if I wanna see how to do things or how to you know, get a little more familiar with it. This is what I use. Okay guys, now there are a lot of options here regarding pack depth, uh, entry style, helical entry that we can use with a lot of these tool paths. Prototrack gets very advanced. Today we're gonna keep things as simple as possible just so we can show you the bare basics. So here we are, we're gonna make this program one. We're gonna call this tool path. And we're gonna go to the beginning of the program. So this is the same screen that's on my VMC2 down there. So to start, let's do some facing. So easy part, let's face it off. I'm gonna hit face mill. Again, this is all conversational. We're gonna be doing a two, we're gonna do a two inch square block. So I'm gonna start a little off the part. I'm gonna go minus one point, uh, let's do inch and a quarter just to be safe. My Y, same thing. Cause I'm gonna pick up off the center of the part. Plus an inch and a quarter, plus an inch and a quarter. Whoops. Plus an inch and a quarter. Enter. My Z rapid is how high that's gonna wrap it above the part. So we're gonna start that at 100,000, make sure it doesn't bump into anything. Enter. I wanna go down, let's call it 75,000 to make sure we get a nice clean face on there. My depth per pass, we're gonna leave at 50,000. RPM, let's run this one at 22, nah, 1600. I'm just spitballing off the top of my head here. Z feed per minute, we're gonna run at 40 inches a minute. And my X, Y, oh sorry, my Z feed per minute, that's actually gonna be 10, just because I wanna make sure it doesn't plunge too quick into the part. We can always speed that up later. And my X, Y, Z feed per minute, we're gonna go 40 inches a minute. Tool is gonna be number one. So now my program is generated. So here's what we do, we go to the tool table. Again, this would be the usual, just you know, point and shoot, click and play with your fingers when you actually do this on the computer. My tool one, we're gonna set that up as a face mill. My material, Ford, this is the material of the tool, not the material of what you're machining, is gonna be an insert. I have a six fluter in there right now. Well, six inserts. My diameter, it's two inch diameter. Just for fun here, we're gonna leave this at zero. We're gonna leave this at zero just for sake of illustration. And that's all set up. So now when I go to my setup and I hit tool path, this is gonna show me what that tool path is doing. So you can see, I can pull this around just like I could, you know, in Mastercam or any kind of cam system and I can see how that works. Now I can go and step through that and see exactly what that toolpath is gonna to do. And we can see that is going to go ahead and make those passes that I want it to. Easy peasy, right? Don't need any geometry, don't need to do anything. So let's go back. We're gonna to go to our event two. So if I go in here, our event one, this program is an event. So each event is going to be an operation essentially. So I use my different events like my different operations if you're programming in CAM. So my second event, let's mill the outside of this. So we're gonna do a profile. So we're gonna use an M mill and profile around it. This works pretty much the same way. And again, this is all super intuitive. So rectangular profile, let's say we wanna kiss off that two inch diameter or two inch square part. So we're gonna go negative 0.995. We're just gonna kiss it off because it doesn't need to be perfect. Same thing for my Y. We're gonna take five thou off per side, essentially. 995, 995. My Z rapid, let's leave that at 100 thou too. My Z end, let's go down one inch. Corner radius, sure, let's add a corner radius. So what this is gonna do, your Conrad, is if I don't want square corners on the outside and I wanna add a radius, you just put the size of the radius in there. So let's go 
0.125. Let's put an eighth in those corners. Going that way, clockwise is the direction of my cut. My tool offset is going to be what side that is offset to. We're gonna leave that to left. I think I'm correct there. My depth for pass, we're gonna do this in one pass. We're gonna go one inch, finish cut. We're not gonna do a finish. RPM, we're gonna go 3000 RPM just for fun. Z feed per minute, let's put that at six. Uh, again, that's going down, so we wanna keep that kind of in the middle. And let's put that at 60 inches a minute. My tool is gonna to be tool two. And you can see now I have my nice square with some corner radiuses there. Again, going back to the tool table, I'm gonna pull up my roughing end mill because that's what this is. It's carbide. We're gonna use a three fluter, half inch diameter. We're gonna leave our offsets all the same. Now, when I go back into my setup, I can see this if I want. So we can see now we have that pass at the top and we have those passes down at the bottom with those two different tools. And the nice thing is if you look over here, you can see runtime. I've got one minute, 57 seconds. So that's giving me an estimate. You know, it's about as accurate as any other kind of estimate you're gonna get from a software. So, you know, it is what it is that way. It seems to be fairly accurate. But what if I want to drill, Ian? Well, you can do that too. So let's make a bolt hole in this. So the center of this, this is gonna be a drill. So I'm just gonna use a center drill, to, uh, standard drill to do this. We're gonna do five holes on this bolt hole. My X, X center is gonna be at zero. My y, y center is gonna be at zero. So it's gonna be right in the center of this part. My Z rapid, again, let's leave that at 100 thou. Z end, we're gonna go down three eighths for these holes. Now, I've already taken 100 thou off there. So let's make it 475. Sure. Radius is gonna be on a, this is how big that bolt hole circle is. So let's do it on a 0.75 inch radius, which would give me inch and a half diameter. Angle, we don't care. We're gonna let that choose that. So we're just gonna have zero. Variable pecs. So this is how many pecs we wanna do. Let's do four pecs, you know, 100,000 pecs. That should be safe. RPM, we're just gonna make that up for now. That's probably way too fast. Let's do 1200. Z feed per minute. Um, let's do five inches just for fun to make sure we're good here. We're going to use that as our tool three. Again, I'm just spitballing this off the top of my head. So now we see we have a bolt hole circle. So if we look, we can see we have those bolt holes. That's where those are starting. Again, we have our facing at the top. We have our um, square milling at the bottom there. So now if I go into my tool table, I got to set up that tool. So we're going to call that a drill. We're gonna use a carbide drill for that just for fun, why not? It's got two flutes, and I believe I have one down there that's about quarter inch, so we'll use that. Again, we're just gonna fake this for now. That is all in there. Now when I go back, if we wanna to go to our setup, again, I can't run it up here because this does think that it's actually attached to a machine, but if I go to my tool path, you can see that's where everything's gonna go. So you can even see where my different pecs are going to be here. Obviously red is rapid, those little X's, those are the drill points essentially. So it's gonna drill, 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 drill. I'm being pretty safe here. Um, you know, you can get a lot faster with this. But again, if you're just doing tool room ops, you know, shaving it down to the bare minimum second programmed in the controller probably doesn't matter. What you're really doing is, I need to get this job done right now. I have this machine, here we go, bop, bop, bop. I just program this part up in, what, four minutes? I'm sure you get that down to two minutes if I did this every day. So it's really useful and interesting to see how this goes. So there you have it, guys. I hope this has been helpful. You know, I'd like to know in the comments below, is a machine like this something you would use in your shop? Is it something you're interested in? Um, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know if this has been helpful. And as always, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.